Are you the guy on the driving range who sets his alignment sticks out and has been told that he's got to practice swinging to parallel to the target line at hip high with the toe pointing up in the air, cocking the wrist and pointing the butt end at the target line on the back swing, rotating the shoulders 90 degrees, hips 45, keeping the knee bent, weight on the inside of the foot. Because if that is you, is it right for you? Have you ever asked why you're doing it? Because surely we can't all be trying to swing the same way. We don't all fit into the same pair of trousers. We don't all move the same way. We're different shapes, sizes, and we all see the world differently. So why are we all told to practice the same way? Because surely this is an individual sport. And so we should have our, our own individual technique. But the question is, how do we find it? We don't need these, for starters, because that just starts to add interference. That's conformity. That's everybody doing the same thing and everybody getting the same problems. If we were all trying to fit into the same pair of trousers, it's going to suit somebody. It's going to fit somebody. So I'm not saying that's not right or wrong. It may suit somebody. But Dustin Johnson's over here. Matthew Wolf's over here. Who's to tell those guys that they're doing it wrong? Because they've got a few quid more than us, I guess. They found a way that works. And we can use the same process. We just need to know how. So this exercise is gonna help you find your most efficient, natural golf swing. By recognizing the movements, by recognizing the space, through self-discovery, how do we know what's right for us if we've not explored all the options? If we're only trying to do it a single way, that's all we ever know. You only know what you know. So if you don't learn anything else, then how do you know what you're doing is right for you? It's a very constrained approach. And if we're all doing the same thing, which you can see on the driving range day in, day out, people, alignment sticks, checking the club face alignment, checking the shaft, positioning. Maybe, just maybe, that's not the right technique for them because they've been doing it 52 weeks a year on the driving range and they're still doing the same drills. They're still having to think where the golf club is. But do we do that in other sports? No, we just play the sport. We just find our mechanics and we've done it through exploration. So this drill is gonna help you explore and find your mechanics. So first of all, we need to have some kind of conceptual image in our mind. And we're going to go over here and we're going to look at this picture and imagine that's us hitting this way down the range and imagine that's the arc of the club head traveling around the body we've got a red arc we've got a blue arc we've got a green arc but we've got lots of variations think of this as more of space this is red space this is blue space and this is green space this is not swing plane or any kind of swing terminology this is just space okay that we're traveling through, or an arc that we recognize. Because the golf club doesn't travel around the body on a plane. It's so variable, it's continually changing. There's so many directional components to the swing and to, the, to how the club moves in space that it's not traveling in a perfect arc. But we don't need to recognize that. We don't even need to try and conform to that or feel it. What we need to do is we need to recognize our own movement. So this drill is gonna allow us to explore the space because maybe swinging parallel and pointing the club at the target line and lifting the arms or turning takes us into a place that's actually adding more interference and confusion and making it more difficult for your body to find a functional movement pattern to hit the golf ball. Maybe we're putting our body in a position it's not comfortable with, but we don't know that, it's unintentional. We've consciously overridden the system and now the body's got to try and compensate and create some kind of movement that you recognize or don't recognize as your golf swing. Sometimes it might feel strange, but maybe that's just the body's subconscious organization. That's its mechanism for creating that, what it seems, what it feels is the functional movement for the outcome that you want. So we're gonna explore some space. What does it feel like to swing red? Red is upright. What's it feel like to swing blue? So this is red and blue. This is how I interpret red and blue. For you, it's going to be different. Your red's going to be different to my red. Your blue's going to be different to my blue. 
Your green's going to be different to my green. But that doesn't matter. All that matters is what is meaningful to you. That's what you're going to recognise as your patterns. The golf swing's just a feeling. And all we're doing is matching a feeling to an image of a golf shot. This golf shot doesn't exist. It's just a figment of our imagination. It's how well can we create movement in response to our imagination. And we don't even feel the golf swing. There's latency to this. When we make a movement, when we hit the golf ball, we don't sense it in the moment. It is almost instantaneous, but it's not actually instantaneous. So actually, movement is a simulation. So we've got to recognize patterns. We've got to know what this movement we're making is going to do. Are we acting autonomously? with a sense of knowing, with a sense of confidence? Or are we not sure what our movement's gonna produce? And if not, then maybe we've got to reassess how we practice. So, this is the red, this is the green, and this is the blue. And if you think about, let's say the wrists, what kind of wrist motion would help me make it red? What kind of wrist motion would help me make it go blue? And what would help me make it go green? And then if I want to make a green swing, so we're making movement with ease. We're not thinking about wrist conditions, shoulder positioning, scapular setting, rib cage rotation. We're just thinking of a whole motion. We can shift our attention for a moment and isolate certain places. We can be aware, because this develops an overall awareness. It's a mindful awareness. These thoughts come and go, we don't hold on to them. We're aware and then we let it pass. I'm aware, I can feel something, I can shift my attention onto my wrists, I can feel that. I can shift my attention to my feet, my hips, any place I like, but I don't hold that attention there. That is not the purpose for me moving. The purpose for me moving is the golf shot and everything is integrated as a system. So we can be mindful of it, but then we don't use that same awareness to actually initiate and execute the movement. Does it feel comfortable to go red? Blue, green. What's it like going red, but then green? With the wrist, okay? What's blue like? Blue and red, blue and green. Now, to help us find this, all we have to do is play around in space and find that place. Find that place. The, I'm moving my arms up and down. I'm moving my club up and down. It's almost like painting a wall behind you. Where is this place that I feel comfortable? And then when you feel comfortable, make a swing. And now, can you go to that place without doing the exercise? Can you go straight to that place? Can you recognize this place where you get the most speed? With ease. What's it like up here? Does it feel as easy? Does it feel as effective? Is it balanced? Can you rotate and move with freedom? Does it feel restricted? Where is the best place? We need to develop this spatial awareness. What we do need is we need that club head behind the body. This has to be behind the centre of rotation. The centre of mass of the club has to be behind the centre of rotation, behind the pivot. And then we can use these pivot forces to swing the club freely and use that centripetal acceleration. The club's working for us now, but where is that optimal place to achieve this? Where's the club got to come from to feel that effortless power? Well, we need to explore the space. Like I'm trying to hit a draw, does green feel easier or red? We do have to be mindful when we're trying to conform to swing ideology. If you are trying to be parallel and you are pointing at the club face and you are then swinging up, is the club actually behind you? If it's in front, we've got big problems now trying to rotate. This, the way the body reacts is different. You've placed heavy constraints because you've physically put the club in a position that's now demanding a movement solution from the body and you've severely constrained its movement potential. If you were to throw this club, where does the club go? It goes behind. 
behind the body. Now you, you're starting to recruit all that stretch recoil from the body. And you've now got physics working for you. You've got the pivot forces. The body's going to use the ground because it has to. It's like swinging a sledgehammer. The body's hardwired for efficiency. We move it into a place where we tap it into these efficient mechanics automatically. Evolution's given us these skills. We don't have to think about it. What we've got to do, we've got to give the body the opportunity to use these. But if we're throwing in the conscious constraints, early doors, maybe, just maybe, the body can't reorganize with efficiency in the way that you want for your golf swing and now we've got confusion in the system now it's haywire now it's really noisy we're getting results we're not sure of i'm doing the right thing i'm parallel and checking and my club face is square and my grip's okay and everything but i'm not getting these results so i'd suggest you go right back and explore space with your club and movement and develop an awareness it's more of an intuitive awareness, it's a feeling. You don't have to look at the club to know where it is. The body knows. Trust the body. And how do we develop trust? We've got to take the leap of faith. We've got to allow ourselves to explore and play some shots. Allow what we might perceive as failure. It's not really, it's a learning opportunity for the next shot and the next shot and the next shot. And this is how we're gonna get better. It's the ultimate in self-discovery. And you're gonna find the efficient mechanics, but you also know the physics behind it, this needs to be behind me. But where does it need to be behind me in space? And how do I get it there? How do I rotate the body with freedom? How do I allow rotation through the whole body? Not just thinking about how the arms are moving because the rest of the body now is gonna to react to just enable you to move your arms in this way and this might not be how the body needs to function to create power. It could be back to front. You might be thinking about this and in doing so, we're not using the ground now the way that the body would do if we were just throwing or kicking or hitting. We're not recruiting those ground reaction forces that the body needs because we've restricted the system. What's it feel like to swing and go red? What's it feel like to go blue? Feel it. Where's blue? There's red. There's blue for me. There's green. Have a practice swing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna feel blue. Even hit a shot. What's it feel like to go green? Now the key to this is to not use the ball as a performance indicator. Don't get distracted by the outcome with the ball. We're learning to shift our attention onto our movement and recognize it. So we're disconnecting ourselves from that ball focused outcome just for a second, just for, just for this shot. This isn't gonna be for the whole practice session. This is just for a portion of the practice session so that we can actually develop an awareness, a feel for where we are because our attention is there just for a moment. And when your attention's there, you can start to develop that awareness. But if I start getting distracted by that ball, my intention's changed. I'm now trying to hit a ball and I'm starting to become dissonant from that body awareness focus. So develop the awareness. Where is this in space? Red, what's red like? What's blue? Around here, this feels like blue. And what's green? Which space, which arc makes it easier for the fade or the draw? Now we can be mindful of the wrists, very close to the end of the chain. Is this sending the club upwards on red? Are the wrists sending the club round the body more on blue? Or are the wrists sending it more round on green? So let's go, let's go red. Let's go blue. This feels blue, more just shallower than red. And now green, green, blue, red. We go green now. What's green feel like? 
so now I'm starting to recognize this space and I'm starting to develop a preference because it feels better, it feels easier. I can feel where I need to be to move with the most efficiency, with ease, and produce that shot that I want. Give it a go. Change the way you practice. Explore and discover your optimal swing.